When I was a kid, most of my pocket money was spent on candy from ice cream sodas. It was an independent store in my small town specializing in pretty much everything that caused cavities. The walls were filled with all kinds of candies, chocolates, and sodas. There was a small cabinet with a selection of handmade candy. There was even a bar where you could enjoy a freshly made milkshake, cone, or coffee. The owner was an old man called Mr. Bramley, who had the demeanor of a pleasant older relative. He ran the store all by himself. I never considered it when I was young, but I have no idea how he managed it with no help. You could tell it was a big passion for him though. He was always a warm and cheerful man. I'd visit every Saturday and Sunday with my friend Jackson. I rarely had any more than a buck, but this is going back some years and that got a lot more of those days. One day as I was choosing a selection of tooth rotting treats, I saw Jackson stuff some jawbreakers into his socks. Jackson, that's stealing, I whispered. You'll get in trouble. Only if you tattletale Dylan, he grinned. It made me so anxious that when I went to pay for my candy, my hands were shaking like I'd done something bad. Everything okay, Dylan? asked Mr. Bramley with a smile. I nodded with a huge fake grin as I took the pinstriped paper back from the counter. Yes, Mr. Bramley, have a nice day. When we left I had to compose myself outside. Don't be a baby, said Jackson, sucking on a jawbreaker like he'd done nothing wrong. The next time we visited I spoke to Jackson before we went in. Please don't steal again. I'll get you something. He pulled out five bucks from his pocket. My jaw dropped. I've got money, he laughed. Why pay if I don't have to? Because it's bad. If Mr. Bramley calls the police. Mr. Bramley is a blind old fool, Dylan. He doesn't notice anything. When we went and I made a point of standing away from Jackson. I chose my candies and paid at the counter. Nothing for you today, Jackson, asked Mr. Bramley, looking over his glasses. Jackson stuttered a little. Oh, no thank you, Mr. Bramley. I don't have any money. You can't leave with nothing, said Mr. Bramley. He took a pack of bazooka bubblegum from the counter and handed it to Jackson. Gee, thanks Mr. Bramley, said Jackson, accepting the kind offer. I couldn't believe it. You have money, Jackson, I said when we got outside. Lots of money. So? He didn't have to give me anything, Dylan. I'm not gonna turn down free gum. He proceeded to pull out more candy from his socks and laughed. This isn't right, I said, feeling bad about everything. You're such a dork, he said getting on his bike and riding off. See you, dork. It was a massive weight for an eight-year-old to carry. I didn't want to be a tattletale, snitches got stitches and all that. But I also knew it was very wrong and didn't like him doing it. The moral dilemma kept me awake at night. One Sunday I went to ice cream sodas without Jackson. I began my usual ritual of taking forever to choose from the various bright wrappers. Come have a milkshake, Dylan, said Mr. Bramley. What's your favorite flavor? I don't have enough money, Mr. Bramley, I said. Milkshakes were a buck fifty and I only had my usual dollar. It's on the house, young man, he smiled. So, what'll it be? I grinned and climbed onto one of the bar stools. Gee whiz, thanks. Chocolate, please. I watched him blend the ice cream and milk, topping the glass with cream and chocolate chips. You're a good kid, Dylan, said Mr. Bramley as I enjoyed the shake. I probably had chocolate all over my mouth but didn't care as I grinned. 
No Jackson today, I see. My grin faded a bit as I looked down. No, I think he's doing something with his folks. I know what he's been up to, he said. My stomach churned. I dropped the spoon and rambled without stopping for breath. I'm sorry, Mr. Bramley. I know it's a bad thing I tried to stop him, but he wouldn't listen. I said the police would be mad, and if his folks ever found out. Shush, he said, patting my shoulder. Calm down, son. I'm not mad at you. I started to hyperventilate and cry. He handed me a napkin. Stop that now, you hear me? I know you're not the same. I nodded as I wiped my face, feeling such relief. I feel bad because you're a nice man. He smiled as he waved a hand. Ah, I'm alright I suppose. I have my moments like everyone else. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll give Jackson one more chance to be good and honest. If he's not, then I'll have to take the matter further. Does that sound fair? Will I get in trouble too? I asked. Not at all. You're not his accomplice, are you? I quickly shook my head. No, Mr. Bramley, I promise. He chuckled. I believe you, young man. I'm quite good at spotting the bad ones. You're a good egg. With that, he gave a wink. Now, come on. Finish that chocolate shake. The following weekend, Jackson and I rode our bikes to the store. On the way, I tried to talk him out of doing anything bad. I think Mr. Bramley might know you're taking things. What makes you say that? He asked. No reason, I shrugged. Just he's not stupid. He's old and blind as a bat, Dylan. He has no idea. What's it to you anyway? I just don't want you to get in trouble, I said. Nerd, he yelled, putting the pedals down and speeding ahead. You can't say I didn't warn him, and that's what I told myself. I parked my bike and entered ice cream sodas, enjoying that sweet smell that hit me. Good morning, Dylan, said Mr. Bramley from behind the counter. He had a knowing smile on his face. Morning, Mr. Bramley, I said, joining Jackson. When Mr. Bramley turned, Jackson took some pixie sticks and atomic fireballs, shoving them into his socks again. He didn't stop there, though. He took some anonymous and PZ and put them in his pockets. Please don't, Jackson, I whispered. He nudged me out of the way and picked up a comic from the newspaper rack. I took my selection to the counter and Mr. Bramley winked at me. Just this today, boys, he asked, looking over at Jackson, who nodded. Can't tempt you to some fireballs? Or an animus? Jackson looked a little sheepish as he put the comic back. No cash again, Mr. Bramley. Oh, well that's not fair now, is it, said Mr. Bramley, leaning on the counter. I'm sure you do lots of chores and help out your folks, right? You should be rewarded with a little pocket change. They caught me off, said Jackson. I'm not as lucky as Dylan. That made me angry. Well, I can't see you go without, said Mr. Bramley. He opened the cabinet and took out a tub. Using tongs, he pulled out a bunch of strawberry licorice laces. I made these myself, and they're delicious if I may say so. He put them in a paper bag and held them out, looking at Jackson. Are you sure? asked Jackson, approaching the counter. Mr. Bramley nodded. If you have no means to buy anything, then I insist. Jackson took the bag and his face lit up. They smell amazing. Mr. Bramley glinted in his eye. They're one of my finest creations. Now, 
Is that all today, boys? I was so hopeful that Jackson would have a change of heart, pull out the candy he'd stolen and confess to everything. But he looked Mr. Bramley right in the eye and nodded with a smile. Thanks, Mr. Bramley. He left the store with the strawberry laces. I looked up at the counter, feeling embarrassed. He just shrugged with a smile. Well, I gave him a chance, didn't I? I nodded. I'm sorry. Don't be silly, he said, handing me some small change. You've done nothing wrong. Are you going to call the police? I asked, the thought makes me so nervous for Jackson. Don't you worry about that, Dylan. Whatever happens, you won't be involved. I promise. He grabbed an extra bar of Hershey's and popped it inside my bag of treats. I nodded with a slight smile. Thank you, Mr. Bramley. When I left the store, Jackson had already left without me. I biked around looking for him for a while before I went back home. My mom came to my room later in the day to say she had just gotten off the phone with Jackson's mom. He didn't come home. Do you know where he might be? I gulped and shook my head. He left the candy store without me. I don't know where he went. I kept thinking about how the police had probably arrested him and taken him in for questioning. My little heart beat so hard. Days went by and no one had heard from Jackson. The police came to my house after school and I almost had a heart attack when mom said they wanted to talk to me. In a panic, I told them everything. How Jackson had been stealing from the store and Mr. Bramley knew about it. I thought he called you guys and you arrested him, I cried. The officers looked at each other and said they would talk to Mr. Bramley about it. In the meantime, there were search parties out looking for Jackson. They found him late that evening, in the woods by town. All I was told at the time was Jackson had died. I was too young to hear the exact details, which I learned about myself later in life. There was a clump of strawberry licorice laces hanging out of his mouth. The ends were deep inside his chest, having choked him to death. There were no visible signs of them being physically forced from the outside. It appeared they'd either been willingly swallowed or pulled from inside. Mr. Bramley was questioned, due to my confession and being one of the last people to see Jackson alive. When asked about the stealing, he said he'd planned to call Jackson's parents and tell them about it. That obviously wasn't necessary after the tragic news. The case was later deemed unsolvable. It's funny how you remember things from childhood and how certain things trigger other memories. It wasn't until I learned the details of Jackson's demise that I remembered something else from that day in the store. It made my blood run cold. When Mr. Bramley kindly gave me that extra bar of Hershey's, he'd said something else too. This is just for you, Dylan. The strawberry licorice is just for Jackson, you understand?